Isn't Ginger wonderful? What a magnificent voice. And wait until you hear her tell a story. The story is called Bears. It takes place many, many, many years ago before humans even roamed the earth. And the bears were the kings and queens of the entire earth. So they had their own television stations, their own schools, their own football and basketball and baseball stadiums. I mean, it was all there. And the story is about two bear cubs, a brother and a sister, and how, you know, most of the time they got along really well. Sometimes, you know, maybe not quite so well. But they learn how to get together, do their math, and make music. The story was written by Bernie Fishman. Fishman, you say Fishman? My oldest son. And Bernie has written a lot of the stories that we do in music in the schools, and then I write the music for it. But I think the important thing is just sit back and enjoy Ginger telling quite a fun and sometimes ridiculous story. Hello. Please allow me to introduce myself. Rudy is my name. And being an illustrious flying squirrel, I am known for my endearing and ultimately charming character, as well as being a fantastic storyteller. And I am going to tell you a story. Once upon a time, long before humans roamed the earth, animals ruled the world. They lived in houses, read books, counted numbers, and the bears were the kings and queens of the kingdom. The lions developed rather slowly. The bears even had their own TV station, BET, Bear Educational Television. Our story is about a girl bear cubby named Roberta who had a brother named Barrington. Barrington liked to beat on pots and pans in different rhythms and different tempos. And while it sometimes could get annoying for Roberta, she usually loved it. You see, Roberta really liked music and she liked to sing. Recently, she found a box with a bunch of old instruments in it in the basement, and she was very excited to start playing them and making some new music. One day, Barrington's drumming got a little too annoying for Roberta. She had a big math test the next morning, and Barrington was making it hard to concentrate. She got so frustrated that she got up and screamed, Barrington, I can't study my adding and multiplying with you banging this stuff all day. Stop it this instant. Barrington, who liked a lot of older brothers, liked to annoy his baby sister, smiled to himself and played louder. Roberta, who was getting madder by the instant, realized that screaming wouldn't do it. So she dug in the box and pulled out a straight joy. She started blowing into it, not making music, but making shrill squeaks and honks and bellows and hoping to drive him up with her own noisy bombardment. All of a sudden, a strange feeling came over both of them. Their music seemed to connect and instead of playing against each other, they started to play together. And it started to sound good. Roberta even started to play a tune. changing, it got faster and faster, and it even changed meter. They played for what seemed like hours until, with sheer exhaustion, they just collapsed. Not even have enough energy 
duty to stand up. Every time Roberta stood up, she fell right back down. She tried to get back to her homework, but she couldn't concentrate. She kept thinking about the music. Why, she could not even watch her favorite TV show, Bear White and the Seven Counting Hands. The music was just too powerful. And then suddenly it all clicked. When she and her brother were playing, the music fell into patterns. True, the patterns kept changing, but still, she realized that if she could guess where the beat was going to change, maybe she could keep their music even better. She was puzzling over just this problem when, suddenly, she heard a loud knocking sound outside her window. She looked out and she saw her neighborhood woodpecker, Bruno, banging away at her beloved orange tree. Her first thought was to get mad and yell and at him as usual, but then she had an idea. Hey, Bruno, do you like music? I like opera, was the brutish reply. Okay, can you count? I know the question you really want to ask. How many pecks can a woodpecker peck? A woodpecker peck, a woodpecker peck. How many pecks can a woodpecker peck if he pecks real good? How many pecks can a woodpecker peck? A woodpecker peck, a woodpecker peck. How many pecks can a woodpecker peck if he pecks real good? Now sing along with me twice as slowly. Follow the trumpet. That's how many. Thank you very much. Um, no, that's actually not what I was asking. Weird. I was playing music with my brother earlier, but we kept getting different beats and different tempos. I want someone who can keep us on the same track so we can sound good. I made a system. I don't need a system. Check this out. Uh, no, no, no! Look, if you count one, two, three, four, slowly like this, and just pick your beak on each of the numbers, you just keep repeating. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And keep the count then we could all play together. Bruno, not being used to being a team player, was skeptical at first. Here, yeah, let's give it a try. With me now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Bruno tentatively started tapping his beak with Roberta. After a few measures, Bruno declared, No way! This is boring! Way too slow! I like my creations fierce! Roberta thought for a moment, then suddenly jumped out of her chair. I got it! You can play twice as fast and 
do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you do that in the same amount of time you did one, two, three, four, you are still playing the same tempo, but you get to play more. All right, Roberto. I like a little more. Let's try it out and maybe even go a little faster. Before anyone knew it, Barrington came creeping in, in his bear-like manner, and began to listen, and soon other animals started to arrive. Many picked up instruments out of Roberta's box. They kept coming like ants to a picnic until they had gathered into a massive 26-piece animal orchestra. And this is how it all began. They played and played and played, and soon the whole town started to take notice. The orchestra was becoming so popular that everyone fell in love with it. And do you know that this was the very beginning of the Versota Symphonia, which, when humans took over the earth, became the Minnesota Symphonia. Oh my, I've gone on way far too long. So, no more ramblings, no more jokes. This story is over. So, I'll say goodbye. And make sure you practice your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eights.